Welcome to People Doing Good for Others, where we celebrate and honor and praise those who truly make significant contributions in our communities. I'm Gary York, and I'm grateful to be with you. I want to thank Wilkes Communications, River Street Productions, and 100.9 WIFM for this opportunity. Our featured guest is Robert Johnson. He's the mayor of North Wilkesboro. He's uh, dedicated 28 years of his life to public service, 20 years as a commissioner, eight years as the mayor, and was uh, just yesterday reelected for his third term. So good morning to you. Congratulations. Good morning. Thank you, Gary, it's very glad, much. Glad uh, to have you here. You and, know, uh, well, I'm, I'm very humbled and honored to be here to start with. I, I want you to know that, and I appreciate what you do. Thank you. So you're a public servant, and I've talked to you several times, and I believe that. And I want you to, if you will, it's a good way for us to start. Let's talk about that opportunity and uh, the idea about service and what it means and the opportunity to help people. That, that's a good uh, thing to talk about, Gary. Uh, I think all elected officials, uh, no matter where they're, whatever position they're elected to, from the president all the way down, uh, need to remember that they are a public servant. That's first and foremost. And it's, uh, that is part of the oath that you take when you're sworn in as a, an elected official. It's in sure. there to serve. Yeah. And um, I, am a ver I am humbled very much about the opportunity I've been able to serve the town of North Wilkesboro and the reason that I got started in it was the fact that I didn't feel like the people were being served by the elected officials. And I experienced that by going before the elected officials of the town of North Wilkesboro back in the early days when I first started in around 1982. Okay. And uh, I just thought, hey, Somebody needs to step up and try to make a difference. And I've, I feel like I have. I, I, don't, I don't try to pat myself on the back about any of this. I do it because I care about the people and about the service that the people get from those that are duly elected to serve them. And at the time I'm speaking of in the early days, that was not going on. Okay. Robert Johnson, uh, as we get to know you, you uh, several times mentioned uh, the influence of your mother. Uh, would you go back and uh, share growing up and some of those uh, servant's heart things that came out of uh, your home? I, I'll be glad to. Uh, I'm from my, my mother and dad. I'm from a family of seven uh, children. I'm the third one in line. And uh, our mother always taught us. Our dad was a plumber by trade, and, of course, he worked out on the job during the day. And when we were growing up, we had duties that we had to, to do there on the little farm. And our mother, uh, not only to me, uh, an influence to me uh, as being somebody that will be willing to go on and do and serve Per se, I didn't realize at that time as a kid that it was a serve me being a serving in a position. Right. I took it that uh, well, you better do it or Mom's going to crack the whip on you. Right. But with that mindset and her leadership of us in, in our home growing up, there was four boys before a girl ever came along, and of course she taught us the duties of. Home, keeping up a home. Sure. Uh, everything from uh, milking cows out out in the barn, uh, slopping the hogs, washing dishes, washing clothes, uh, scrubbing them in an old number three washing tub. Uh, yeah. You've done all that. I have. Wow. And mom was was a very humble person. Um, I don't think that humbleness came to me in life until my time in service, I guess. And then I realized just how, how much while I was away that 
uh, I miss that guidance and leadership of my mother, even though the military taught me a lot of, about uh, Tell life. us about being in the Army. You said it gave you a lot of insight about leadership <laughs> and what you're using today. Yeah, um, it did. Um, actually, uh, Gary, I, and part of this, in the Army days, it's going to go back to um, my time at home. All right. Uh, that's where it started, the, the um, want to go to the military. Um, our, uh, our family didn't have a lot. Uh, Mom worked and she did uh, selling milk and butter and she worked at the Peerless Hosiery Mill and, and provided and helped provide what Dad couldn't provide with his monies. But um, when, it, when I became, well, so let me phrase it different. When I turned 17 years of age, had a real good friend of mine that went through high school with, Aunt Doug Laws. Uh, he and I talked about, back in those days, the military guys, Army, Navy, all they'd come around to the schools. All right. And Which uh, high school, Robert? Wilk Central High okay, School. Okay. And that's before, before it was built over where it is now, out on uh, 16. But uh, it, it was in behind what was the YMCA there in in the middle, um, well, just before the River Bridge in Wilkesboro. So uh, I said to him one day, I said, you know, uh, I believe I'd kind of like to get away from home a little bit. What about you? Well, and we both worked in the supermarket, uh, made a little money to kind of help with our mothers and our family, and um, made enough to buy a bicycle. That's the first mode of transportation I had. All right. It was a bicycle. And so he said, well, well, let's think about it. And when it became a senior year, 18 years of age, uh, we decided we was going to join the Army. And we joined to get, uh, on the buddy plan. And from there, we took What's that mean? That means that you get to go. The buddy plan is, it, always, it don't always end up that way. <laughs> but the Army is supposed to guarantee you that you get to stay together. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right. But uh, you, you find out a little later on in life with the military, uh, they change their mind sometimes. Okay. Uh, so we did. We went to Fort Knox, Kentucky for our basic training. From there, I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, advanced uh, training. And uh, we were together there for about a year. And then uh, I finally got orders to go to Germany. I went to Munich, Germany. And that's probably two of the greatest years of my life of uh, being there, knowing that I had to use the things that I'd learned back on the farm and learn from my mother and my dad, of course, but more so mom, because she nurtured that guidance. Uh, and you just, I don't know, and I just didn't want to stay there and keep chopping grass from between the rows of corn. Right. I wanted to kind of get away from that. That was the biggest thing, was to get away from that hard farm work. Right. And I thought, I'm going to buy grains, I'll be all right, and I yeah. get in the military. But I learned it wasn't, it, it was a but good But it was good thing. training. Absolutely, it was great training. Good. Um, taught me a lot. I ended up uh, being a... Over, I oversaw, oversaw five guys in my section that I uh, was uh, in charge of. Uh, I was in artillery and uh, ended up, though, in Germany, I, I ended up as a supply room and arms room clerk. Okay. I had it made. Robert, let's go forward, if you will, now to um, the town of North Wilkesboro. Can you just kind of give us town limits where we can mm -hmm. just say some some marks uh, here and here and there, if sure. you will. Uh, anybody that is familiar with the town, right. the corporate limits, uh, I'm going to start over on the 115 side. The corporate limits uh, runs out the Armory Road 
just above the armory in the first big curve. And see, that's where I grew up. Uh, oh, and, okay. and when I came out of the military, I bought a home there. And I could throw a rock into the city limits. Right. Probably hit the sign with it. That's how close we were to town. Walk to town at any time with mom. And then if you go on up the 115 side, it stops right there at uh, Ted's Kicking Chicken. All right. And then if you go up 18 north, it goes up to the Mountain View Road where you turn out going toward Mountain View, Trap Hill. Uh, 268, it goes down to the top of the hill there before the uh, creek. Yeah. Uh, now, are you, is that close to Samaritan Spurs? That it's below Samaritan's Purse. Okay, all right. Actually, uh, Samaritan's Purse is in the corporate limits of right. town North Willowbrook. Right. And um, I'm just thankful, and and I just feel like we're blessed to have them. Anybody be blessed to have them anywhere, but they do a great job. They do. A, there are public public servants there, You're too. Right. right. So, yeah, it's and then that corporate goes down 268 to that, below that point there at Flint Hill Road, if you're familiar with that. Okay. And uh, that's about... Kind of over extended. Finley Park up in that well, area? Now, Finley Park is in the corporate limits. All right. Uh, if you go uh, to cover that part, it goes up to the corporate limits, goes up to Williams' Motel, yep. just beyond sure. it. Sure, sure. Then it goes uh, up... Uh, the bypass, we call it, yeah. uh, a 421 bypass. It goes up to just beyond Don's Char Grill. Sure. And that, that about covers. Okay, uh, now how many people do you have? And just uh, go from there, if you will. Uh, you talking about the population? Yes, I am. If I'm, uh, I may not be exact, but it's like 4,282 people between that and maybe 5,000 people. Okay. Uh, describe a council of government. How does it work? It's, a, I guess, a North Carolina statute. You have so many commissioners and you have a mayor. Correct. Just frame for us that, Robert Johnson. Well, the uh, council of government uh, operates this way. Uh, we're still, now, our good friends here in Wilkesboro, they call themselves a council. Okay. Uh, town council. Uh, we still stick to the the initial old, if you want to call it that, town commissioners. All right. But councilmen and commissioners are one in the same. It's right. just a different way of uh, identifying. Okay. And ours is made up of uh, five commissioners and one mayor. Okay. Wilkesboro's council is made up of four councilmen and one mayor. All right. And the structure that we have um the count the 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 commissioners uh, vote on every issue and the mayor doesn't have a vote unless there's a tie so it's kind of hard for to have a tie with five board members sure unless one of them happens to be out right and you know Gary uh, to that point I've never had I've never had to do that I've had members that's been out and we've never had an issue in my leadership as mayor, now it happened some back in the early days of being a commissioner, uh, but as the mayor, I've never faced that issue because we normally come to some kind of consensus that it's either going to be a three to two or, or four to one or a five to nothing. Robert Johnson, tell me the role of a mayor in, in your community, uh, the essence of it. What do you think is important? What are the things that you say, you know, well, we need to be doing this? Well, here, here's what I think the leadership of the mayor is. Uh, and the mayor's job is to be a leader, which I did get that experience in the military. Mm -hmm. I gained it from my mother and brothers and so forth at home sure. growing up. But you've got not not just being a leader, but you've got to have the ability to converse with your board members. And I do that prior to a meeting on different things that we are going to be discussing or issues that we need to have a commonality or to sure. have a, 
a vote that's going to be the best for whatever situation, be it for the streets, water, sewer, whatever it may be. But in doing that, of course, I conduct the meeting. I keep the meeting in order. Um, and um, I swear in the different officers and the different people that has to be sworn into their duty as far as us. Uh, a commissioner, I can, you know, I, if they want me to swear them in, I can swear them in. Right. I swear in police officers and any other titled people that needs to be sworn in. Uh, and the, to me, the main important thing is to be a good listener. Wow. And let that stuff soak into you. And then when you get into the discussion, to be able to help decipher that what's going on, people's little bit of their mindset, and keep it smooth, as smooth as you can. And I'll tell you, I don't have a problem with harsh discussion. I okay. think it builds a relationship. It lets people know you listen to their side of the view, uh, their viewpoint. And it doesn't bother me if you have a split vote. And the reason I say that, it lets people know that you have had some discussion. Sure. And, the, you know, the, I think the people appreciate that. Uh, Robert Johnson, one of the biggest challenges of a, a community the size of your wonderful North Wilkesboro, um, challenges of your your council and your community faces each and every day? Well, I'm gonna go back in a little bit of history of what we've faced. Uh, you know, um, years ago when jobs started going overseas and oh, the well. loss of furniture, the loss of textiles, and everybody uses this, and it's very true, jobs. I mean, it's important to have jobs for the people that live in your community, not just, I, I mean community, but not just the town, but out in the community. Uh, and we've lost a lot of those, uh, as well as you know, and you guys have down your way and sure. all over this end of the western part of North, North Carolina. But I think to, uh, to be able to reach out to smaller businesses, we've been able to do that that they can grow. We provide the area and the infrastructure, water, sewer, uh, land for them to grow. And the perfect example of that is uh, everybody knows what Lowe's Company was mm -hmm. or what they are today. Sure. I don't know how many people know what they were yeah. when they began, but they began small. Right. Right there in downtown North Wilkesboro, as a little hardware store in, the, in that area of the art gallery now. And they grew into a big company. Yeah. We had textile that did the same thing. And it came along and it, it, it opened businesses in Wilkesboro. Furniture, they all started small, Gary. Glass. Carolina Mirror, world's sure. largest mirror manufacturing company. Yeah. And, of course, we're very blessed to still have our, our little Gardner Glass. Right. And um, we've got, uh, oh, my goodness, Window Worlds. Sure. That's a huge plus to Great. us. We have uh, Johnston Casual. Yeah. Uh, Rod Iron Furniture made some similar to what's sitting right over there. Um, and we've been able to maintain and keep our heads above the water. Um, now the main, uh, the if we kind of describe the, the what the, the city, what does the city, the town do? We have police, sanitation, fire. fire. Are there is that pr primarily the services that we offer? Well, we have police, fire, streets, sanitation, and uh, wastewater. Okay. Gotcha. Wastewater. There's about five primary. Right, tell us about your manager. We have a great manager now. I, and we've had great managers in the past. But Larry South is, is by far 
a, a great guy, does a super job. He He's a mountain boy. He grew up in Ash County and drifted off down toward uh, Davy, I think, and was a, maybe, I think he was a county manager down there for a while. And he ended up in Hillsville, Virginia, stayed up there 28 years or so, and then we, we had our manager that left, uh, Hank Perkins, he went to Louisville. And so we started a search and he applied and we hired. And we also in our, uh, go back to police department. Um, we have, uh, in my opinion, one of the greatest police chiefs that you could have. Wow, great. great. Joe Rankin. Joe Rankin. He was a former HP guy. He retired from the HP and he applied for the police chief's job when Randy Rhodes retired and he's made a super police chief. Now there's also a finance department that is included in all these right. departments okay. that you have for the yep. town, all right. which is very important. Yes. And the girls in the office that handles so that. You have clerks that stand. We have a town clerk, Kay Minton. Uh, you can't beat her. Great. I'd put her up Has she been him. a career person she in has your been. town? She has been. Yeah. So has the lady in finance, uh, um, the girl that does uh, rights the checks and stamps all <laughs> them. She's a, a long time employee. Yeah. Um, I guess the newest one that we have is a girl, the girl that takes uh, water receipts, takes yeah. the money for uh -huh. water. Yeah. Uh, and see, that's another department. We have uh, our water department, a department head over it. It's, it's just Robert, a great- Robert Johnson, I want you to do this for us while we're here. And thank you so much for coming. Uh, your town is responsible for sanitation, for Correct. picking up garbage. And then you take it to a county landfill. Correct. How does, tell us how that works. Well, we have our trucks that goes around through the residential area and the right. commercial areas, and okay. they pick it up. And when they get loaded and full, they take off down 268 down to the county landfill and dump it out and of course we pay a uh, a fee All right. to dump it in the landfill okay. a lot of, and a lot of people kind of when that first started Gary the new landfill and all we had you got to pay for it somewhere sure there's nothing in your town that you don't have to pay for yep. and uh, but now that everybody's kind of leveled out and realized that they got to keep it up you got to pay the employees to take care of the landfill. Uh, we try to be as minimal. I think our uh, landfill fee is two dollars per household. Uh, it's a little greater on the commercial side of it. I, I'm not sure. I think might, it might be five or ten dollars or something like that. Tipping it, fee, they call it. Another thing I want us to address too with your uh, your Larry South, one of his key roles will be to develop a budget. He does. And uh, that's uh, the last day of June, mm -hmm. I think, every year. Have and to so have it by then, The yes, budget sir. and decide about uh, the income side from property taxes. And um, that is a, that's a significant role for those city commissioners and you as the mayor, is to develop a uh, budget. Yep, well, here's how that works. Uh, and I like the way he works it. And prior to that, uh, we used this method. The department heads that oversees each department, such as sewer and sanitation and your water department, your police department, your fire department, he gives them, or they give him a list of priorities, say maybe up to 10. And then he takes annual budget year, and then he takes it, puts it together, brings it to us. We sit, and, and then they're there to, to say why when we have our budget work sessions. We do have budget work sessions. 
And they, each one open of the, to the public. Open can, to can the come public. In and yeah. Voice your choice, yes. or whatever you might yes. want to say. And the department heads are there to uh, stress how important each item is that we have it. And then once that's done, uh, we as a board uh, say yay or nay. Uh, I think this is what we can do, and uh, we can do it at this uh, for this monetary amount of money, this amount of money. And uh, I can sit here and tell you I'm proud to say we hadn't That's raised great. taxes in 16 years. Really? Good for you. Robert Johnson, a, a couple little of, uh, facts, if you will. When do you meet? We meet. Now, this has been strange to me, Gary. We always meet on the first Tuesday after the first Monday All right. in the month. Okay. So I, Where do you meet? At the in our town hall building, and where is on Ninth Street? Ninth Street, okay. It's on the Ninth Street side of our town hall, which is on the town hall is on the corner of Ninth and Main. Do you have an open forum? Can if if I live yeah. in your community, I can. Do I need to call in or write or before I come if I want to talk? No, I mean when we when we start our meeting, uh, we have a uh, in in the board minutes that we vote. And, there's a time for public comments. Okay. Open so you public. encourage that, knowing yes. you as, I, as I've, uh, these several months of being together, uh, you look forward to people coming, right? We yeah, have a absolutely. voice. It's a, it's a place that you're representing those people who come in That's there. That's right. And who live there. Open. It, and you know, um, we do put a time limit, uh, and it's stated right there on, in, in the, the list of the minutes, two minutes, but I've never, I've never cut anybody off right. from anything. Robert Johnson, mayor, uh, town of North Wilkesboro, re-elected last night. Um, I want you to, a couple of um, stories I want you to tell. Uh, you have a significant relationship with the town of Wilkesboro and the county of Wilkes. And just share with us how that works. So you're working together, you, you, uh, you want to make things better, and so you become partners, I think, in yeah. the future. If you'll just tell us a little bit about uh, how that works. Well, back in, uh, in my 28-year tenure, I, I had three consecutive terms, four-year terms, and then uh, I lost out, and it was a blessing, really, because I do electrical by trade, and it gave me a little time to set up my own little business. I'd worked for a company, Duncan Electric Company, for 20 years. And then people wanted me to come back, and I did, in 2000, I believe it was. And so, in some of our, we have a board work session, like maybe the Thursday before our Tuesday meeting in the, in the next month. And, and in some of our discussions, and, uh, and we also have a board retreat each year, we talked about, okay, let's get beyond, and I've always, I've always been one to stress that, let's get beyond of not reaching out to Wilkesboro. I, I don't care who reaches out first, just put your hand out there. And the county. Used to be a lot of animosities. So you work together. We do, and we've... Two of the hardest things, you asked that question a while ago, what may be two of the hardest things in my tenure? It would be the probably the water intake, yep. and we're still working on it. Yep. We've made some steps in it, I think positive, and the hospital. Right. See, the town owns a little Wilkes Regional Hospital, yeah. and uh, we leased it out to a body of a board of uh, hospital Wilkes, Regional Hospital Authority Board, yeah, I believe. Yeah, right. And so with that being said, it got elected officials out of it, and it prospered and did real well. And then uh, over a period of time, that transpired. That was a part of the trans, uh, par transpiring of reaching out and working together. Because okay. you had people serving on that board that was county lived in the county, you had people from Wilkesboro serving on it. And if you, 
I've always been of a mindset, you'll never accomplish anything if you bump heads. All right, Robert, uh, what an honor to have you here today. And we want to thank Wilkes Communications and River Street Productions and WIFM. The, the values of being a grateful person and having the opportunity you've had, just kind of close with that. Well, uh, I will. Um, it's been a, uh, a great uh, road wow. to ride. And I feel uh, very, as I said in the start, very humble and honored to be able to, and I've served a lot. As you've given a lot, you've received a lot. I have, and I've received a lot of, uh, a, a learning trend from a lot of people older than me at that time when I was serving. And I just trust and pray that uh, I can, people can say the same thing about me, that I've been a, a blessing and somebody that can has guided them, such as we got a new little commissioner coming on board. Okay. And I told her yesterday, I said, if you win, I want to try to help nurture you into this thing and be a positive. I know one thing for sure, Robert Johnson, you have a servant's heart and you give and share and care. Thank, Thank you, you for being here. Come back. God bless you. Thank you. I've got God on my side. I do know that too. Good. <laughs>